everybody. It's Dr. Eric Balkavage. We're back for another episode of Thyroid Answers Short. So this is another short episode. Um, instead of that longer format, hour, hour and a half, which I really like for those uh, more in-depth conversations, this is one of the shorter episodes where I'm going to cover just one topic. Um, so I get this question quite a bit. So I thought it would be good for one of these Thyroid Answers Shorts, and that is... Um, can someone recover from hypothyroidism? Uh, a lot of people say that their doctor says you can't recover from hypothyroidism uh, or Hishimoto's and that you just, you know, you're going to be managing it for the uh, rest of your life. And so can someone recover? And I would say the answer to that is maybe. I mean, I've been doing this for 20, 30 years, I guess, at this point. Um, and I've seen a lot of people reduce the need for thyroid hormone medication uh, and a lot of people not need the root medication anymore. So is it possible? I would say maybe, but I think the big three criteria we need to consider is if your gland is not significantly atrophied, I think there's a good chance that you can recover from hypothyroidism. Um, if you are not suppressing TSH, um, there's a good chance your thyroid gland can recover. So if you're one of those people who's taking a lot of thyroid medication, um, maybe you're taking T4, you're taking T3, your TSH kind of hangs in uh, low ones or under one on a regular basis. You're being given so much thyroid medication, either intentionally or unintentionally, that you're suppressing TSH and essentially atrophying the gland. And so there's no reason for a thyroid gland to be able to recover if you're taking that much thyroid hormone, there's got to be some stimulus to the thyroid gland to start generating more thyroid hormone. And one of the stimuli uh, to help increase thyroid gland function and production of thyroid hormone is a higher level of TSH. So you're not, if you're taking, you know, more than a day's worth of thyroid hormone. Uh, you're going to essentially shut off the gland and you're, the chances of you recovering from hypothyroidism uh, may be very minimal. Uh, the third maybe is that if you address what caused your hypothyroid condition to begin with, I think you have a really good chance of recovering from hypothyroidism uh, as long as the gland's not atrophy and as long as you're not over-medicated. So to big factors that drive hypothyroidism. One, iodine deficiency. And some people argue there isn't iodine deficiency in the US and other people say that everybody's iodine, potentially iodine deficiency in the US. And the reality is it's probably somewhere in between. As much as we'd like iodine to be like, oh, if, if I just take iodine, a recovery occurs, that's, it's, it's likely not that simple. Um, the other major cause of hypothyroidism is immune driven damage. Now, there's different opinions on this. One opinion is that the immune system's out of control and it's just destroying the gland and there's nothing you can do about it. I think in general, from an allopathic medicine perspective, they fully realize that most people with hypothyroidism uh, have Hashimoto's, they are thyroiditis. You know, we dif differentiate Hashimoto's from regular thyroiditis depending on antibodies. But antibodies can swing back and forth based on the immune response. Uh, I talked about that in great detail with Dr. Bujidani on an early episode of the Thyroid Answers podcast, maybe last year or two years ago. Um, but if you, in, in allopathic medicine, they fully realize that a lot of it's immune driven, but they don't feel that there's much that they can do. And they're and I think the general consensus is the immune driven damage is only occurring at the thyroid gland. And since we don't want to put people on steroids to suppress the immune system, and it appears that it's only creating damage to the thyroid tissue, and we have a strategy in place to replace what the thyroid gland can't make, this, this medication, uh, levothyroxine or T4 uh, in any other, in, in any of its forms, there's not a lot of attention put towards what's driving the thyroiditis, the immune-driven damage of the gland. From my perspective, and I think many in the functional and integrative community, we realize that there is stressors that potentially drive the immune system 
to damage the gland. Some people in the functional and integrative community still think there are stressors. A lot of times people hang their hang their hat on gliadin or gluten as the as the primary driver of thyroiditis. But um, they definitely feel that they're, they're, these are stressors that we can reduce or remove. But I don't think a lot of those people actually consider the fact that we can potentially recover from hypothyroidism, even though um, we can, they realize that there's stressors that are driving the thyroiditis. And then there's people like me who believe that potentially what's happening in the body, the reduced conversion of T4 to T3, the thyroiditis of the gland isn't all broken physiology, but this is an adaptive response to some type of excessive stress response. What that stress is or what those stressors are that create this excessive load for each individual is what drives the reduced conversion of T4 to T3. It's what re results in the thyroiditis and it results in the glandular hypothyroidism. Um, and if you're in the camp that I'm at, then what we need to focus on is not trying to manipulate lab values to help a thyroid gland recover. But what we need to focus on is what's causing the individual person's stress load that's sitting in front of us with, a th with their thyroid condition. How do we reduce and eliminate their excessive stress-driven load to allow them to start to convert T4 to T3 better, uh, reduce the thyroiditis, and improve thyroid gland function? And I think if we do, if and when we do those things, that's when we see people recover. Now, I also think there's a whole bunch of people that are inappropriately medicated with thyroid hormone, E4, T3, NP thyroid armor, um, and that there's a whole bunch of people that should have never been on thyroid medication to begin with. They don't truly have a thyroid gland production issue. Mo a lot of people have reduced conversion issues because they have some type of inflammatory process going on, and that's adaptively decreasing the conversion of T4 to T3. That's So when somebody looks at their labs and they see that, oh, your doctor only looked at TSH and free T4, they didn't look at your T3 and reverse T3 and see that you're not converting T4 to T3 well, many times they want to jump in there with T3 medication to fix the blood levels, assuming that it fixed the tissue levels and that's not necessarily the case. And therefore, they're put on thyroid medication way too early. There's other people more in the functional medicine community than the allopathic medicine community who feel that if your TSH isn't within a specific range, one to two, or 0.8 to, to two, uh, or T3 isn't in a specific range, or T4, or free T3, or free T4, or reverse T3, isn't in a specific range, which is often called the functional or optimal range, then we need to step in and give you thyroid hormone to manipulate those values. The challenge with that is, is that it jumping in with thyroid hormone to try and optimize blood levels often results in people taking thyroid medication way too early. Uh, yes, it can create some temporary changes, but it also sets the stage for more problems. And I think for a lot of people who have cell stress, inflammatory mechanisms, and reduced T4 to T3 conversion and have individual tissues that are struggling from a hypothyroid state, by jumping in and intervening with thyroid hormone too early in an effort to potentially make them feel better or optimize them, as some people say, I think we set the stage for causing glandular hypothyroid in those patients. And Currently, there's about 23 million people in America who are on thyroid medication, primarily levothyroxine. And I did a podcast with Joe L. Corey. He's a clinical chemist. Uh, I think probably earlier this year, I released the episode and we had a fantastic conversation, but based on his, his research, he is thinking that there's close to 70 to 90% of the people on thyroid hormone replacement therapy, were put on it inappropriately. Uh, somebody interpreted their labs wrong. They provided it too early. They're trying to treat symptoms and not um, versus treating based on guidelines. Okay. Um, 
And so I think that's a huge issue. So for a lot of people, can they recover from uh, hypothyroidism? The answer is probably because the vast majority of you were probably put on thyroid medication, uh, not because people, physicians are bad people. They're trying to do something they believe is appropriate, but for a lot of people, um, it's inappropriate treatment in my opinion. And it does, while it can manipulate uh, thyroid lab panels and maybe some other labs and change symptoms temporarily, I think it leads to greater problems. Um, and like I said, I don't think these clinicians are bad people. So why would clinicians potentially prescribe medication too early? Many times people come into a clinician's office, they research, they, they have the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism um, and their doctor runs their labs and maybe TSH, free T4, if they're at a traditional allopathic physician and sees that their TSH is a little bit elevated, but not outside the lab range. Uh, the free T4 looks good, but the patient's complaining and the patient wants some help. And so their primary tool in their toolbox is to give T4. So they'll give it. Um, and I don't think it, there's bad intent here. I think they're trying to give the patient what's they, what they want. Um, there are other clinicians who run it, see the patient has hypothyroid signs and symptoms. They run a TSH free T4 and they see that their TSH is, maybe it is lab high. Maybe it's above four and a half. Maybe it's above six. Their free T4 is still within reference range. This is what we call subclinical hypothyroidism. Um, and they decide patient symptomatic, TSH is elevated. They still have enough T4. I'll just give them more T4. Uh, so again, I don't think there's bad intent here, um, but likely because they only ran uh, a limited panel, TSH and free T4, they don't realize that, A, maybe there's plenty of T4 in this system, but the reason the TSH is elevated and the patient has hypothyroid symptoms is because they have an inflammatory process going on that's resu resulting in reduced T4 to T3 conversion inside the cells and tissues. There's reduced T3 in the bloodstream and circulation. And that's why the patient's symptomatic. But if you don't measure a full thyroid panel, you wouldn't see it. Then they provide T4, which does suppress TSH, but actually in time can make that T4 to T3 conversion worse. Because if the system didn't want to convert T4 to T3 initially, and you give more T4, um, that's only going to make the T4 to T3 conversion worse in time. Um, I think some clinicians, as I said, especially integrative and functional practitioners use narrower ranges and we call those functional or optimal ranges. And people think those are set ranges that we need to force labs into. Um, I, I think this is a problem in functional and integrative medicine. Those we use sometimes tighter ranges to say, Hey, this might be a better range, a healthier range. But it doesn't mean that if they're not in that range that they need treatment. Lab values shift and change based on what's going on with the individual. And we need to interpret labs, not just read them for H or L outside of a lab reference range or our own personal optimal or functional range. So you see people who are optimizers, who are thyroid managers, who say, um, we need to optimize your T3. We need to optimize your T4. We need to optimize your reverse T3. And we're going to use the, these medications to optimize values, assuming that the lab, the amount of hormone in the blood is the only issue. They don't realize that there's a whole aspect of tissue and cellular signaling uh, that's maybe even more important that's what, than what's in the bloodstream itself. Um, and I think there's a lot of physicians who maybe aren't aware. And, and Dr. Joe, uh, we discussed on the podcast that there are seasonal changes to lab values. Um, TSH can vary depending on the season. You know, individual levels of T4, T3 can vary. Um, and people don't take that into consideration. So, uh, if you are not taking the seasonal changes into consideration and somebody's TSH is a little bit higher, you may assume with a limited panel that that's abnormal. 
even though they may not have signs and symptoms. That just may be what happens, especially in, in uh, the older population. We see that there's a big, there may be a bigger swing seasonally, and that may lead to people being prescribed inappropriately. I think it's a much better, bigger issue in the integrative and functional medicine community because we're t- trying to look at tighter ranges and saying, these are where you need to be to be healthy. And if we're definitely not taking the seasonal changes into consideration, that may lead to a lot more people being over-prescribed in the integrative and uh, functional medicine communities. So what, what can you do or what should you do when you get diagnosed with hypothyroidism? Um, a couple things I think you need to consider as, as, the, as the person who's got the condition. You need to identify what you want. You have two major strategies here. You can go to somebody who's going to help you manage your thyroid condition, much like we manage blood pressure, much like we manage cholesterol levels. Somebody can give you a medication that can manipulate a blood value and you don't have to do a lot of work, right? You're, you're, you don't have much, your T4 to T3 conversion is decreased. They can give you T3. If you don't, your gland's not making appropriate thyroid hormone, they can give you more T4. Um, and so you can, if you want to not get involved in identifying the root cause, changing diet, changing lifestyle, you just want to feel a little bit better and manage your condition, then you, what you want to do is look for somebody who's going to do that. That's probably going to be um, definitely allopathic medicine, a traditional endocrinologist. Their focus is going to be on managing a TSH and managing potentially a free T4. In integrative and functional medicine, you're also going to see managers. These are often the people who are are prescribing both T4 and T3 uh, and trying to manipulate your blood values into a certain range because they assume that that means if they've optimized the T4 and T3 in your blood, that they have optimized your cellular physiology or your thyroid physiology, and that is not necessarily the case. And if you're spending a lot, that clinician is spending a lot of trying time to, trying to optimize the blood values, there's a good chance that you're probably not going to recover from a thyroid condition because they're typically providing more thyroid medication than the, than the body makes to try and optimize the, the blood levels. And that results in suppression of TSH and suppression of a thyroid gland. So how is it going to recover. I mean, it just typically, it, it, it leads to atrophy, not recovery. Um, if you want to try and recover thyroid physiology, and I'll talk about what that maybe means in a bit here, uh, you want to find somebody who's going to focus on helping you identify what role this cell stress inflammatory process, what's contributing to your excessive stress load, and then and how do we reduce or eliminate those stressors and somebody's going to help you make sure you're not over medicating and suppressing TSH. You're not over medicating and reducing peripheral T4 to T3 conversion. You almost want to be on the edge of a little bit of a under medication if you're trying to recover, because as soon as you're, as you start to heal and recover, your, your body is going to want to kind of start to restore normal physiology. But if there's too much medication in the tissue, the gland can't start to recover and it can start to squash uh, the conversion of T4 to T3, even though you're starting to function better. I kind of talk about this a lot of times as a stall. When I, when I start working with somebody who's got hypothyroidism, they're on medication, um, and we start to reduce the inflammatory mechanism, start to change habits, behaviors, some of the, the chemistry that's challenged Um, and the inflammation load goes down, they start feeling better. They start losing weight or they, their energy improves and they sleep better and they're less anxious and less depressed and gut functions better. And then, and they're doing better. Then all of a sudden they hit a plateau. They're like, okay, I've stalled. I haven't really changed since the last time. That's usually indication that, okay, that medication that was maybe appropriate 30 days ago or 60 days ago, it probably is not appropriate today. And we really need to get a new thyroid panel run and see what's going on. And this may have been a person who um, 
Previously, when we looked at the labs, they were on appropriate dose, but now that there's less inflammation, there's too much medication in the system and we need to get that medication reduced. And when we do get it reduced and then retest them 30 days later, you can see that they're converting better, their glands producing more hormone and their signs and symptoms are starting to improve again. The other thing that you want to consider is you want to consider the first part I just talked about was what you want. Do you want to manage? Do you want to manage your condition or do you want to recover from your condition? And then you need to make sure that you understand what the clinician that you're hiring is trying to do. Are they trying to manage your blood levels of T4 and T3? Or are they focused on trying to help you recover from thyroid physiology? So in allopathic medicine, they're definitely focused on almost every endocrinologist you're going to meet is focused on um, managing or optimizing a TSH or, or, or free T4. And in integrated medicine, you're going to see a lot of people that are uh, managers as well. Um, they may say, hey, I'm a thyroid expert. This is what I do. But really what they're many times what they're doing is just managing T4 and T3. Now, some people may take uh, in functional medicine may say, well, I don't do that. And, I'm, and I prescribe T4 and T3. You may not, but I get a lot of clients who are gone to thyroid specialists in integrative and functional medicine and just get placed on T4 and T3. And that physician's primary focus is trying to optimize their T4, to optimize their T3, optimize their estrogen, estrogen, optimize their testosterone, optimize their progesterone with hormone meds, hormone replacement, and nothing gets done. So I... Uh, evaluate and identify and reduce the stressors that created the problem to begin with. That leads to frustration. It leads to over-medication. Um, and then usually it leads them to somebody like me. So make sure you know what you want. Do you want to manage your condition, less work, or do you want to try and recover from your condition? And if you want to recover from your condition, you got to make sure that what you're what you want is what you're, the clinician you're hiring is is really focused on. Are they just trying to manipulate my blood values? Are they really focused on trying to help me get the, take the least amount of medication that I need while at the same time identifying, reducing, or eliminating the stressors that created cellular and glandular thyroid condition, condition to begin with? Okay. Um, the next part of this is what does recovery mean? And so I was asked this the other day when I was talking about this with a potential client to like, what do you mean? What does recovery mean? Does that mean everybody um, gets full thyroid function back? Um, and the answer to that is no, I don't, I don't think necessarily think that's thyroid recovery. If you have a thyroidectomy, you've had radioactive iodine treatment, you may never recover. Um, thyroid gland function, but that doesn't mean you can't recover your thyroid physiology, meaning that if somebody has their gland destroyed, can we give them an appropriate amount of T4 and T3 that duplicates pretty close to what the thyroid gland would have made? And that thyroid hormone enters the bloodstream. That thyroid hormone gets converted appropriately in the cells and tissues so that they don't have hypothyroid signs and symptoms on a regular basis. And I would say, yes, we can, we can see that happen in a lot of people. And I would still call that thyroid recovery. Now, what, what else I call thyroid recovery is that somebody needs less and less medication over time. And when they take a medication, it actually converts well at the cells, at the tissues. We have appropriate levels of circulating hormones patient doesn't have hypothyroid signs and symptoms, they feel and they function well. Um, and a lot of those patients, at least my patients over time, um, not only need to reduce their thyroid medication and take less thyroid medication as we work on reducing their stressors, um, but many of them over time don't need it at all. And I think part of the a big part of that reason is some of them were put on thyroid medication when they shouldn't have been and for a lot of the patients, almost I would say almost all of them, we're identifying some of the things that are contributing to their excessive stress load and reducing or eliminating them. And as they do that, whatever thyroid hormone they are taking starts to convert better. And as they start to convert it better, they feel better, they function better, 
And the other thing that starts to happen is if we're monitoring their dose and we're monitoring their labs over time, as long as they're not over medicated, they can start to, we can start to see the thyroid gland actually recover. We see as we drop doses of T4 and or T3, that we see T4 levels come up by the thyroid gland. We see better conversion. We see improvement in symptoms. And then in time, the thyroid gland just makes sufficient thyroid hormone and the cell stress inflammatory mechanisms are gone. And so they're, whatever level of thyroid hormone they're taking, whether it's what they're taking or what their glands making or a combination, it converts well at the cells and tissues and they feel and function well. So another question might be is like, how long can it take potentially recover from hypothyroidism. And that really depends on the individual. Um, it depends on, I guess, the premise for which they were prescribed medication. Um, just because everybody gets di a diagnosis of hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's doesn't mean the cause is the same for everybody. So we have to consider each individual. If you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism and you've been on meds for 20 to 25 years, your recovery may take longer. Um, if you are more aggressive at changing habits and diet and lifestyle, your recovery might be quicker. If you're more open to changing your mod or having your dose reduced and potentially having a little, a short time, a short time frame where you might have a little drop a little worsening of symptoms before you can recover, then you might may start to feel and recover a bit quicker. So it really does depend on the individual, but I've seen some people that have, have relatively new diagnoses and their thyroid gland just, it, there, there's been a lot of damage there before they realized it. And I've seen patients that have had been diagnosed of hypothyroidism for decades, being able to come reduce their thyroid dose, feel better on a limited thyroid dose, or, or eliminate the thyroid medic need for thyroid medication altogether. So it can take a while. It will take time for the thyroid gland, if it's got the ability and the capacity that it hasn't been too atrophied, to start to recover. So it's not a sh usually a, a real a super short time strategy unless you were totally uh, given thyroid medication when you didn't need it, but it's usually a little bit of longer time frame six months, it's not unusual that somebody is reducing their thyroid medication when I'm working with them within 30 days, starting to work on them. One of the reasons is many are over-medicated, but as we start to make diet lifestyle changes, address gut function, organisms, toxicity issues, threat level goes down, conversion improves, and we often have to reduce that medication. Um, but I, I think for a lot of people, it is possible to recover, whether that means less medication and it works better or not needing any medication at all. Um, so another thing that we want to consider here is that if there was an excessive cell stress load that triggered the reduced conversion of T4, T3, that um, that resulted in the thyroiditis of the gland and the glandular hypothyroidism. If you improve diet, you improve lifestyle, you address those stressors, there's a great chance that you're going to improve your thyroid physiology. You're going to start to recover normal thyroid physiology. The challenge is if you only improve those habits, those lifestyle factors temporarily, and then once your thyroid recover thyroid physiology starts to recover, you start to resort back to those same habits, those same behaviors, those the same dietary things that triggered inflammation, let's say in your gut. Are you likely to have a cellular and tissue and glandular thyroid condition again? Sure. Um, so this is not a thing where you can make often make just short-term changes. You have to consider that any stressors that be, start to become excessive, regardless of what they were last time or what they are the next time, if that load of stress becomes too great and that triggers that cell stress, cell danger, inflammatory response, 
you're going to probably have signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism again. And if that stays more persistent, you probably will start to develop thyroiditis again. It's recoverable, but you can't like do these things short term. You have to start to keep the stress load down if you want to maintain what we call thyroid homeostasis in the cells versus what we call thyroid allostasis. Thyroid homeostasis is a state of low stress where the body wants a higher conversion of T4 to T3 to have higher levels of metabolism in the cell. Thyroid allostasis it occurs when there's a stress or inflammatory or low energy state and the, and the cell has to determine, like shift energy from normal metabolic systems to ramping up cell defense. And so we generally get a down regulation of thyroid hormone in that state. But most of the people who come to see me or complain of chronic hypothyroid signs and symptoms aren't in thyroid homeostasis. They're in thyroid allostasis because of the success of stress load. And it's not broken physiology. It's typically adaptive physiology. So if you reduce the stress load, the thyroid conversion improves, thyroiditis can go down. But if that stress load becomes excessive again, why wouldn't you go right back to the same adaptive response? And this doesn't mean that the strategy you used before failed. It means that your stress load became too great and you've got, you've got to get back to work. One of the, uh, uh, another point here um, is that if you're going to recover thyroid physiology or that's your goal is to try and recover more normal thyroid homeostasis, it likely is going to create, it's going to take some work. It's going to create some change in your habits, your behaviors, your lifestyle, your diet, your nutrition, your relationships. Uh, you're going to have to oftentimes ad address the elephant in the room. That's the greatest stressors. Um, whether you want to or not, you often have to address those things if you're going to recover. So keep that in mind. So if I start to wrap this up, um, can you recover from hypothyroidism? And the answer is, yeah, I think you can. If you do, if you, you can recover from hypothyroidism, if that's what you want, if you're work, working with a clinician who has the same mindset as you as, Hey, we're, we're going to help you try and recover thyroid physiology, not manage it. If you just want to manage thyroid physiology with medication, and not address the things that caused it, then you're probably never going to recover your thyroid gland function or normal tissue conversion. Um, but I think you can, if you're willing, if you want to, but you got to be willing to make changes, put the work in. I know that most of my clients are typically inappropriately medicated when I meet them. Uh, I know most of the clients that come to see me are primarily being managed. They're not on a recovery course. Uh, most of my clients have their thyroid medication reduced as we work together because they hit the stall and they we have to get have that dose reduced. Now, I don't prescribe medication. I, I assess their labs and I give recommendations for the prescribing physician. And some physicians kind of push back. Other physicians at this point, um, they're frustrated too. So when somebody else says, you know, try this, they, I think they're, what I've seen in my experience is a lot of the uh, clinicians are open to making changes because they're, they're frustrated. They don't know what else to do as well. And I would say most of my, most of my clients have a significant improvement in symptoms with less medication needed with better conversion in as short a time as a couple months. Um, and I've had lots of patients who have experienced their own thyroid recovery completely where they're not on thyroid medication. They feel and function well. Um, and I have some clients that, yeah, they need, still need some thyroid medication, but it's probably much less than what they were taking when they, they came to see me. And two, it actually works better. So less medication works better. Their signs and symptoms have improved um, and are feeling much better. So that's what I call thyroid recovery. So if you're listening to this episode of the Thyroid Answers Podcast and you have your own frustrations, obviously uh, you can go to my website. You can schedule a complimentary discovery call. 
and we can have a chat about what's going on with you. Uh, if you like these epi- these short episodes of the Thyroid Answers podcast, please send me a, a, a note either at my website or wherever you're watching or listening to the podcast. And if you can be so kind, go to wherever you download your podcast and give me a nice review uh, or whatever you think is um, appropriate for these podcasts, all right? So hopefully you enjoyed this this episode of the Thyroid Answers Shorts and uh, look forward to another episode next week. Thanks.